Okay. All right, Oki Magazine family out there all across the world, welcome back. I'm here with my brother, Khalid Rodriguez Peña. How are you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you? And how are you guys? Um, How's everyone doing? I'm uh, doing good, doing good. I'm just uh, trying to get started with the day. I think we both had a late start. So <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the nature of the beast being a musician, but it's all good. You know, we'll we'll, we'll get we'll get everything flowing. But um, man, you got an album dropping at the at the end of this week on Friday, March fourth. Uh, entitled yes. Melange, is that right? I just want to make sure I'm saying it right. Melange? Yeah, Melange. Yes. Um, so my French <laughs> is not as good as my Spanish, so I just want to make sure. <laughs> and my French is, is, isn't that good either. So, you know, <laughs> I like the word, you know, how, it's, how it sounded in, in French better. No matter oh, what. I see. <laughs> yeah, the mezcla or make sure. I mean, uh -huh. this, those are good words, but still, like, the sound was like, I liked it more in, 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 in French. Yeah, no, it has, it has a nice vibe to it. It's, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of, you know, I got that, that little, little, little twing at the end of it that gives it the pizzazz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, so tell us, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about the album, like who's on it and, uh, and some of, uh, like how it came to be. I guess we'll start with who, who's on the album with you. Uh, well, in, in the album, it's just like my regular bandmates, mostly. I have like a few guests. Um, but uh, the, the core of the band um, is uh, Cass George, Cass M. the George, a uh, tenor saxophone player, who actually okay. just released his own music uh, recently. He's got like, a great album called I Insist out there. Um, Gabriel Chacarji on piano. He's a piano player from Caracas, Venezuela, one of like my favorite um, musicians here in the city. Um, as a matter of fact, all of them are like some of my favorite musicians, you know, besides favorite people to, to, to play and hang with. For me, that's important. So the music, um, you know, happens naturally and with certain flow. Uh, then uh, we got uh, Bam Bam Rodriguez from Caracas, Venezuela also. Nice, uh, nice. On, on the bass. Um, Zach of Avril from right there from Brooklyn, from Park Slope, uh, on drums, and Victor Pablo Garcia, who is a Puerto Rican and percussionist, is also in, in the band. Then we got like three guests. Uh, we got um, Jeremy Bosch, the, the Puerto Rican singer. Um, he, he's on the album. Uh, Cuban pianist, uh, Arruan Ortiz, mm -hmm. and um, Cuban vocalist, uh, Gina De Stone, is also in the album. Oh man, that's that's quite the lineup. I like it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, I, I, I've already heard the album stuff, and I so I know I know what's what's uh, what's going to hit the stores on Friday. But uh, you know, I'm just excited, uh, you know, for everyone else to to, to the, that hasn't heard it, what they're gonna what the reaction is gonna be. I, I know it's gonna be popping. <laughs> well, you know, I hope I hope so. Oh, <laughs> it will most definitely. It's um, a lot of, a lot of like a, a lot of work. Um, Dedication, you gotta put in a lot of hours. So you always want the, the best. You know, you always want people to have the best reaction, you know. But I think the most important thing is like we enjoyed it really a lot also when we were uh especially when we were in the recording uh, mm -hmm. studio. We really enjoyed it. It didn't feel like much work mm -hmm. once we were in there <laughs> <laughs> in, in recording. Uh, but uh you know, the process leading up to it and after it, um, it's a lot of work too. So you always want the best for, 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 for your music. It's like, it's like your baby. You know, you want your baby to go to the best school, to have the best life. So it's the same when you like putting music out there. Yeah, even when the baby's acting up, you want what's, what's, what you want what's best for it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I say that, you know, being a, being a parent. Yeah, but yes. I, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so... So with the, with the tunes and the arrangements that you did, um, everyone has a different story because a lot of this music is coming in in this time of the pandemic, or as we hopefully as we're kind of nearing the end of it. Were you writing this music during the pandemic, prior to the pandemic? Like was like was the music that was already there and then it got put on hold because of it, or what was kind of the the genesis of this? Okay, well, um, actually, I recorded this album right before the pandemic. 
Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it was in uh, November of uh, nine, uh, 2019. Okay. And basically, uh, what happened is that with the pandemic and all of that, you know, I decided to that it wasn't the moment to, to put it out there. So m most of the music uh, was written right before I left Cuba. Okay. You know, like right before like a couple months or something like that. It was like some of the last music I wrote down there. Mm -hmm. um, some of the, the music I recorded, I, I, I wrote it um, a few months right before the record. Like two of the songs actually, I, I wrote them for my uh, recital, uh, concert recital graduation. You know, the, the, the graduation recital, <laughs> sorry. But, um, when I was in my high school of music, so mm -hmm. you know that it's like a period of like six years, basically. Yeah. Of fighting. Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, it's kind of like a like a like a, like a, a, a gradual process of like your growth, like your growth and changes as a musician. Yeah. in New York. Exactly. I did like a um, selection of like because I like writing a lot as much as I like playing, honestly. Uh, so I did a selection of like tunes that we always play with the band and the songs I like the best and that they like the best too. And, um, you know, and then we started recording because we have been playing for a while. When I recorded the album, um, I had the band for like four years. Um, and I had already like a solid idea of what the one, what the band is going to be. You know what I'm saying? So because I, I play with different musicians first, I tried different things, played the same music with different people. I was doing a lot of experimentation. I would say the first couple of years, you know, um, it wasn't as steady as it became as as I started finding that you know the people that I wanted to play with. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, um, once I found that, we played some gigs. You know, we were playing a lot, rehearsing, and then. The, once it sounded, you know, strong enough, I decided to record. And also, like, I did, I did it right after I graduated from MSM. So, you know, it's like, you can see definitely, like, like a period of of, uh, of of writing for me, which is from 2013 to 2019. Oh, uh, okay, got you. That's the chronology, the general chron chronology of it. Some periods uh -huh. you are more creative, some, you know, you are a little bit less creative. It always like, you know, shifted, shifts a, a, um, a little bit, but that's basically like the, the time period of music that is recorded. Oh, gotcha. Cause I, I was sitting here thinking, like, I, I remember when you first came to uh, to New York. Um, I, I feel like I met you shortly after you came out. I, I was trying to remember when you came exactly. Like, I, I feel like it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little while. It was January of uh, 2014. And we met, yeah, like, a, Couple months after that, I remember. Yeah, either at Sakai's or or maybe at a gig on the, on the in the city or somewhere. Yeah, I think yeah. we probably met at Sakai's uh, because the thing is that I met Lucas in Havana uh -huh. basically a month before moving to New York. Uh -huh. So as soon as I, I moved here, I hit him up and like he hooked me up with, with all of you guys. I remember. Yeah, I remember but, uh, we video with uh, down in the basement in full place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, and then I like did this. Con I think the first time I played with a guy uh, officially, like, was when we did this conga head video with uh, Natalie Fernandez, the the singer. Yes. Uh huh. Oh, nice. And, uh, <laughs> yes, and it was a while ago. I had, had like long hair, like was skinnier. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a full set of hair too. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, yeah. I don't remember that. The world, maybe my memory started to fail. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I, I, I've kept it short for a while, but like, yeah, no, I definitely didn't have a, quite as much gray hair back then, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but yeah, so, man, time has flown by. So you, you, you've been here almost, almost ten years now. Wow, wow. Yeah. Yeah, a couple years is gonna be ten. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, how often do you get back and forth between Cuba and like I know you go to Europe and Cuba and kind of transition. I actually don't go to. I haven't been to Cuba since. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's like a complicated um, thing uh, for me. It's basically, you know, I love my country, but the, the whole like political economical situation for me is a little bit, you know, it, it's kept me from going to be honest. Oh, like, I see. I see. The things, 
you know, like the dictatorship and all of, you know, there, there are a lot of things going on down there that for me are basically unacceptable, you know, from mm -hmm. human rights violations to all kind of like atrocities that I think that the government keeps on, on doing mm -hmm. to the people down there. Uh, and for me, you know, I don't have to do, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I understand. But, you know, I could go. It's not a, like a, like that I can't not go to, you know, that I'm not allowed to the country. Well, that I know of because I've been pretty <laughs> outspoken about, about what I feel with the dictatorship and all of that. Right. Uh -huh. uh, but, you know, I'm not afraid of calling it a dictatorship, for example. I know a lot of the people that try to avoid getting in those like political arguments. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think you have to be outspoken. I always remember when we were younger down there, they would tell you, hey, musicians or, or artists should keep out of politics. And then when I was here, I, I, I realized that that's kind of a brainwashing, that you should have your own opinion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I'm vocal about this. Like, you should have your opinion of, 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 of things, even if you are not a politician or, I don't know, what, whatever it is that you do, if you have, like, a little bit of information about something or you live through it, in my case, I live there, you know, like, you know, I was born and raised there. Mm -hmm. uh, you should have your opinion, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And you don't be afraid to, to express it openly. So, yeah. But, um, you know, I always recommend people to go down there, though. It's like an experience, you know. I always say, people, you should go down there. Maybe you will value your life here even more, you know. Oh, I've never been. I, I do want to go check it out at some point, yeah. Well, you um, should go. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe we'll go together. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do a little little big vacation down there or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, eventually I have to go, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so, yeah, man. yeah, I'll go with you guys. Yeah, most definitely, man. I mean, I, I'm sitting here thinking about it. It's like, I, I, I always feel like um, a lot of the, the Cuban musicians that I've seen throughout history, they, they you know, with, with some of the, the hardships that come out of there, it, it comes out in the music, and it seems like the music is a release for a lot of artists such as yourselves to kind of, like, you know, get this, you know, get these these uh, these feelings of, of, you know, off, off your chest, you know, so to speak. Um, most and definitely. everything comes out in the, in the music in your, in your album right now, you know, so. Oh, most definitely. And I think I, 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 I said it in, in the interview for the press release or something like that, but basically one of the things that I found in common of uh, when I moved here, that, you know, one of the things that I found that um, Havana and New York have, have in common is that they both, are places that are beautiful places like vibrant cities when you can you know do on a given night so many things and you always have so many options of like going out or like meeting with people or, or and stuff happening you know mm -hmm. so it's like i would say like they are culturally pretty alive mm -hmm. um but also and that's the beautiful part of it that like you always can be doing something that has to do with creation and with creativity and like um and with arts but at the same time, there are places where people are struggling to make it every day. You know what right. I'm saying? Exactly. And and even if, you know, I mean, I won't, besides politics and all of that, it's just like a fact of life. Like in New York, you have to struggle a little bit. It's like an expensive place to be and like a really fast place also to, to be. People always think always about only about rents, about how expensive the city is. But also like the speed, I think in terms of speed of how fast you gotta keep on evolving and upgrading your knowledge and like you know you always have to be working on yourself. And I feel like in Havana it's kind of the same vibe, you know. Even if people don't probably understand sometimes this down there, I, at least when I lived there, I was trying to get better when you know with my heart and my music and I'm, I'm trying to like you know, go about life in a way that I, that it can be better to. Um, when you are in that mode of, and that state of mind where you have to like really like focus on like making it, um, and making it can be many things. It doesn't have to become like rich or anything, whatever making it is for you. Um, you kind of are forced to grow. You know what I'm saying? Most definitely. Like, you basically don't have to. 
But if you really want to like keep the pace, you know, you have to always keep improving yourself. And um, I feel like New York had that in common with Havana, and that's a lot in in the music, you know, that sound, uh, that um, that city sound, I would call it, um, and that live sound. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of the music that I hear these days, uh, when when you go to school, and I, you know, not nothing wrong about going to school. I I went in Cuba and here, um, but sometimes when you learn everything from an academic standpoint of view, sometimes what life is about, and when you get it all out of your head, but you don't have many experiences and you don't have to like have some of that life struggle. Mm -hmm. I think some of it is lows in the music, right? Yeah. That yeah. rough edge that yes. should be always there. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That you can hear that in Chabotin's music, in Arsenio Rodriguez's music, but you also can hear it in in Bob Marley. You can mm -hmm. hear it in Young Coltrane. You can hear it in in in, in Bird in DC. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can hear it in Benny More. That life is in there. You know what I'm saying? That connection to like what happens to you, how you express it. And I don't. I'm not saying that you have to be poor, broke, and be on a struggle. You know what I'm saying? To 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 have this in 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 your music, but you should at least be aware of it. You know what I'm saying? And you should be able to like have some contact to reality. You know, uh, and and give that social context to your music, mm -hmm. and you will hear it in in the way that mu the, the music is being played. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and a lot of it. I'm sorry, it's not. I don't hear it in today's music. So I, I was trying, to, I'm always trying to make a point of like, how can we make this sound as alive as possible? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Most definitely. I mean, it's funny, you were, you were mentioning a lot of these different influences and I was thinking, you know, when I hear you, you know, um, there's definitely vocabulary from, you know, your, your, your Latin American, you know, music history, so to speak. I mean, a language source. I, I don't know if I'm kind of <laughs> communicating in the best way. But, you know, from the Cuban experience that you have and the jazz experience, you know, like, but, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like a seamless flow. Like, it's not, um, it's not like this is this hat, this is this hat. It's kind of just, it seems like it's just together. Like, how, how did you go about yeah. doing that? Oh, man, because it's just the way it happens. It's life. It's organic. You don't have to think about mixing things or anything. I mean, the mm -hmm. album is called Melange because I know that all of that is in there. Mm -hmm. But... You don't have to think of that. That should happen. Mm, you know gotcha. what I'm saying? Like when I'm writing an, an, an arrangement, for example, when I was arranging that yes or no arrangement, mm -hmm. um, there are lines on the bass line that I wrote in the melody of the song that, mm -hmm. I, that, I, that they came out of timba, but they were organically because I wasn't thinking, oh, this is the line I'm going to play there. I'm just was I was just playing the the, the, the the piano right when I was writing that and I instead of doing like pop da 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 I did pop da da pa bu do pa 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 do pa da pa 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 those things those were things that I'm playing because also like I've been listening to like timba for example my whole life right mm -hmm. but I've been been listening to jazz my whole life too so when I'm thinking of music the way it is in my head they already both. There. And yeah, I also yeah. like you gotta, my point is always this: you gotta go back as you got you gotta reach as back as, as possible in the tradition. Yeah, and mm -hmm. as back as possible, it's not even New Orleans or like the the ports in Havana in late nineteenth century. Mm -hmm. Back is Africa, back is back in Europe, but like early European music. You know what I'm saying? Because that's ab about the point they started merging together. In the mm -hmm. Renaissance, you know. So when yeah. you listen to music in that way, and you try to like, and I'm not saying that you always have to be like listening to like, 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 like Cuban, like that like Yoruban drumming, and like music of of, of Palestrina's music. But I'm I'm saying that you should be aware of what's going on when this music came to be, and then yeah. you find a lot of commonalities. Most you find the commonalities definitely. instead of focusing on like the difference, and the differences are really important too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when you find the commonalities first, it's gonna be like a really easy process for you to mm -hmm. see. Oh, yeah, this rhythm um, sounds like it could work 
this song sounds like it could work, could work as a rumba tune too, if I just made these little adjustments. But those that shouldn't be like a theoretical thing. That's that's something that you should be able to sing. You know what mm. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so it sounds like it's like kind of, yeah, for me, like it's the same thing. It's like I have all this, all this different musical influence and, you know, you get to the paper and the piano is just like, you know, I don't think like, oh, this sounds like Radiohead. This sounds like, uh, this sounds like something from Eddie Palmieri. This sounds like something from Coltrane or from, you know, Wayne. It's just, a, it's all a mixture in there for you. Yeah, because here it's like a scramble eggs. Like, yeah. he, honestly, <laughs> do you know where exactly in which area of your brain that is? You don't know. All of that is part of who you are. Yeah, exactly. And we, we play, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like when, when you, and you hear it in all the greats. I always mm-hmm. tell people, man, Thelonious Monk, man, this guy thought in clave. Like, you could play any of his songs, either mm-hmm. in swing or in clave. <laughs> like, you know, like, and it, it's perfect. It just works. You don't have to do much to it. Honestly, you don't have to do much to it. Like, I have a, I just recorded like this past um, November, actually, some more music that I want to put out in the future. And uh, we recorded like an um, arrangement of like Think of One. I mean, honestly, I didn't have to do much to the melody. This is yeah. a rhythm already there. <laughs> but that's because he understood that connection. Yeah, most definitely. You know? And, yeah, and the great, all of the greatest, they have this, this, this understanding that, that they are playing music. They are not focusing on what genre. Yes, yes, exactly. And I feel like some people get in the head of, you know, I'm playing jazz, I need to, hit, I, I need to stick to Tang, Tang Ling, you know, and it's like, no, you shouldn't limit yourself. I mean, like, you know, yeah, Duke was checking out, you know, the music from Cuba. Dizzy was checking out the music from Cuba, you know, I mean, and it, it, yeah. it's a beautiful cross, cross uh, pollination of the two, you know. Um, yeah, man, and, and the world is such a huge and beautiful place place with so many cultures and so much information that we all come like at this point in history mm-hmm. thank god we all can like drink from endless fountains of like knowledge and music and inspiration most you know? definitely actually you, so we, you t- we touched on yes or no i was wondering if you can talk on uh some of the other tunes on the album uh you know if you don't want to talk about all of them that's okay but if you do want to that's fine as well oh yeah sure uh well we have this um I mean, let me see if I can go track by track. So also, oh, okay, the next track after Yes or No, it's a student, it's not a disciple. Um, that song, for example, I, oh, it's funny because I was playing the other day in a rehearsal that I have right here. <laughs> uh, uh, that song, the way it came to be is basically I wasn't, when I was in school, still in MSM, I needed like to turn a song for a, for a, for um, Exxon, you know, uh-huh. and I had to to go with a raga and a tala from music um, from um, Indian music, mm-hmm. um, specifically cl- classic Carnatic, I think, music uh, from India. And basically, I again, I just was like, okay, this is the the, the, the main rhythm, so I'm gonna base the bass line on this rhythm that comes from the tala, and then. Um, I need to work with these notes and put it on a specific order. So you always try to like be creative, you know, but also like you, you for me, you, people got to be able to sing your melodies, mm-hmm. you know, most as definitely. Yep. And as abstract as they might be, you always have to give people a hook when you are like um, writing a song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The melody is crazy. Sometimes I, I like lines that are like crazy, you know, well, mm-hmm. then the bass gotta like, have like this. Something's gotta have like a gravitational pull that people can relate to, and they can, yeah. can maintain their their attention. It's really important mm-hmm. because this is the thing. Um, today it's hard to keep people attention, even harder than probably was like fifty years ago. So you gotta like find ways, you know, within the music to do that. Um, so yeah, basically, I, 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 I is the way I, I combine that, and then the bridge of the song. Um, it kind of keeps the same intervallic um, structure or design in the bass. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to get super theoretical right now. But then I, I introduce some changes. You know, you know, it's like just the way some the, the, the composition happens. It's always different for me. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes when I like when I'm giving like some materials and I have to like to like work with them. It's like a play for me. It's like Lego. 
you know, it's like putting like a Lego <laughs> together. I, I love that. Uh, with this, I had like a rhythm and a, and, a, and a raga, which is kind of like what we call scale, basically, in Western music. Yeah. And basically, I had to like play with that, you know, but that gives you, when you have like a set of tools that you're given and you have to like play with them, that will enhance your, creati your creativity, I think. Most definitely, yes. Uh huh. I agree. Um, you know, then there is this song, uh, La Historia de Rendira, which I composed in Cuba. That was one of the the, 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 the few songs that I that I wrote. It's based on, uh, I, I love reading a lot. And um, sometimes I will read some fiction. I usually read like scientific oriented, historical, a lot of factual stuff, as I call it, biographies, you know, autobiographies. But um, some li literature, like some fiction stuff is amazing. And I really love um gabriel garcia marquez so that, that's based out of like a gabriel garcia marquez uh short story and um man it's, it's funny because i usually after a while i stop playing music that starts sounding like i, I i've had it in my head or i've played it for a while but that song specifically i still like i'm like amazed i'm like oh i, I still like this song yeah uh, <laughs> i still play it so i record it i think it's a really nice song again i try to maintain like unity th through the composition in many different ways through the rhythm through the motion of the bass through the melody you know what i'm saying um stuff like that um well like someone in love is like another arrangement i i, I did when i wasn't i tried to did this uh, this was another homework uh, <laughs> but say i i, I try to like mix a lot of like the modern um harmonic vocabulary that you find in like i don't know like gospel music and r and b and um and even jazz but especially like a lot of like gospel influences on like uh r and b and some hip hop harmonically speaking but then you know it's like like a timba song so there are layers of of influences that i have in my music that are really like specific that you have to look for them in order to like to, to to see what's going on because when the team by stuff comes on top of it you the harmonic part i think are kind of seamless so people like don't listen but when you listen to that all of that is in there you know mm. to, because for me again it's how we do how do we use these elements that we already have in there mm -hmm. but that we can put and position in different ways you know what i'm saying yeah. maybe i'm gonna have this element of this style of making music mm -hmm. um mixed with these other elements so in in the case of the harmony as i was saying in this arrangement is like coming from this like a uh, black american styles of music and then but the whole uh rhythmic layer comes from from, from cuban music and yeah. then um the way it works is always like really interesting for me because it always you always create different combinations you know, mm, definitely. Um, yeah, man, I have a lot of music like that. Um, yeah, well, I'm trying to remember because it's like, oh, one of my favorite songs, the last two songs I wrote before the album, Thinking of the Universe, uh, mm -hmm. it's almost like a suite. It's got like different parts. Yeah, uh, that was um, I remember that one, yeah. Yeah, and that's like we're more the most metaphysical song of the album, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, basically, but it, it, again, like it's got like some influence for so many stuff, uh, and it's mostly like rhythmically. I was listening to a lot of like music from Puerto Rico, like bomba and plena and stuff like that. So, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we didn't use congas for those one for that one. I think Victor is playing barril in there. Oh, you okay. Know? Mostly like barrel, and I remember that I was like, "Hey man, play like some bomba and play and stuff." Like, don't don't go to that much to that Cuban part. I want to like because that's what I was li listening in in the moment. I was listening oh, okay. to a lot of the Miguel Senon, um Esta Plena. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, that's a great record. Yeah, and man, it's so funny. I started recently listening to that record recently again for some reason a lot. Like I've been listening to it a lot. And I'm like, man, that definitely was. I draw some um of ideas from there to for this song. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like okay, and then uh, the last song Se Acabo, is also like um, a song I really like. I, I wrote it like when I was done with MSM about to. It's called like Se Acabo, like that's uh -huh. it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a joke, but also like 
I um, invited Jeremy Bosch to to sing in this one for the for the chorus, uh -huh. and um, and it's amazing because I, I, he was like, "What kind of like, what do you want to talk about?" And I was like, "No, let's talk about the the current situation." Meaning, like, we also like it's like a walk and be like when you're tired or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I I like one of my favorite artists ever is uh, uh, Ruben Blades. Ruben Blades. Mm -hmm. And um, you can shake your ass with him, but also you can learn a lot listening to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can dance, have a great time with his music. But you, if you pay attention to what he's saying, you could learn so much. You mm -hmm. know, so basically, I I think um, he he's one of the main inspirations. Like I always think, oh man, if I write lyrics or or I, if I invite a singer to 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 do something with the band, I want some of that um, social context, mm -hmm. you know, to be in there, like to 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 talk to something that people can like relate to on, right. on their everyday lives, like mm -hmm. as the music used to be, you know, mm -hmm. before it went so academical and still yeah, <laughs> to yeah. The robotic, the robotic, you know, <laughs> the robotic phases, yeah, give it some, <laughs> you know, because that's <laughs> what I, that's the, the I always tell, let's you know. This might sound to some people like a bad joke, but I'm gonna still say it. Uh, I'm always saying like, let's let's let um, how do I say? Oh, let's make jazz dance music again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, I think connection is really important, and one of the things that we are losing these days in general is connection mm -hmm. as human beings. You know, so we shouldn't alienate people some more. And I've been through this. Sometimes I'm like, well, man, people should like my music. You know, I went to school so many years and I know so much. So let me write something that they have to like be. But man, that doesn't sound inviting to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if you are a preacher and you want people to come to, 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 to your church, you would do or say things that, that resonate with them, right? <laughs> you know, like when, if my, when Malcolm X was like preaching down here in Harlem, he was telling people stuff that they felt so related to. That's how you com he converted people to like the nation of Islam or you know whatever he was doing at that moment. It's like yeah. I'm I'm giving you uh, or talking with you about something mm -hmm. that is about your own personal story, and and all everyone wants to be reflected you know, on a story in a, in a way. So if you talk about this in your music or like that's part of your narrative as as, as, as a musician, I feel that people will feel invited. Gotcha. Most definitely. Because why yeah. do I have to understand this story of this guy that is telling me that I don't even know about this guy? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And besides, this sounds weird. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot how, <laughs> how a lot of people like think about. People don't want to talk about this because we are supposed to be so politically politically correct. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I think these things should be, you know, talked. Yeah, yeah. Talked. I mean, that's, that's what they talk about at the bars, you know. So, <laughs> so might as well get it out there. Think. <laughs> be afraid. At the end of the day, man, you are not supposed to be liked by everyone. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if you are, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> exactly. So I, I, I know that when I say these things, my is it might sound like. If not controversial, at least a little bit um, how cocky, maybe when I'm saying like, "Hey, man, people are not that," or whatever people, you know what I'm saying? Atrevido, you know, like daring, uh, right. because people don't want to talk about this. And but I'm like, man, evolution doesn't have to be in five a, eleven a, three sixteen bars. Evolution can be also like on top of the clave. Or or, or or playing seven four two, but still I like, give something to the people that they can like feel related to because I mean some of the music I have in the album is in in four four, you know what I'm right. saying? Mm -hmm. But it's not about that. It's I, I remember when I met Kaz in Cuba and I started like writing in odd meters and he told me something about oh man yeah the music is great but I can't dance to it and I was mm -hmm. like how do you mean you can't dance? Of course you cannot dance. This is like odd meters. This is like so I mean, so, you know, like, it's like, I don't know, I was like 18 back then trying to figure out this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, but let me show you a song I wrote. And it was like some 5'8 stuff. And man, it grooved. 
Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, you can dance there. It's, it's supposed to have. It's still swinging, even though it's on. <laughs> exactly. It was yeah. like swinging. I was like, oh wait, so you can actually like play a tumbao in eleven sixteen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is. I'm, I'm kidding now, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so, yeah. For me, I don't know. That's important. I mean, I don't know, man. But all of the people that I grew up listening to, and like a lot of the people we look up to, they understand mm -hmm. this. Most definitely, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, it's like if I, I, I always say, like, if people are trying to analyze your odd meter writing and rather than just feel it, then you, you're probably forcing it. You know, <laughs> that's my point. Yeah, my point. Yeah. You so know? you know, I mean, yeah. I, I, I totally agree. Um, hey, I, 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 for writing. <laughs> if they are that? analyzing it, you know, well, but no, it doesn't bother me. But it's funny to me. Sometimes when you're analyzing something and at the end it is 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. It's like trying to, trying to look for a, a diamond that's not there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, though. That's really funny. Yeah. Actually, I wanted to talk about, uh, I forget the, the title, forgive me, um, but we, I, we talked about it, um, about, uh, there was a, uh, there's a, a tune on there, I think maybe it's the track with Ottawa. On, um, that's a the traditional Latin, is that, is that the oh, tune, right? Yeah, Drume Mobila. Yeah, yeah cause I remember listening to it. And I remember I told you, I was like, I've heard this song, but it was from a, a singer in Argentina, and they call it Guerra yeah. Guerra Negrito. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that song, we had that conversation in the studio, remember, with uh -huh. uh, Bam Bam. Actually, uh -huh. Bam made me aware that there was like, they sing this song in Latin America and South America, especially. Yeah. Also. And I was like, no man, but come on, that's not like a, like more of the Caribbean part. He's like, no, no, listen to it. So he sent me this video. Um, I think it's the same video you saw, probably. And I was like, bro, it's almost the same song. Yeah. So it's the same song basically. It's just that the way it came to a lot of like traditions we have coming from mm -hmm. Spain, they kind of like varied a little bit and they became their own thing or even for Af from Af from both places from africa and spain when they go to the islands in the caribbean or they, they go to the mainland of the continent right there was a lot of like um well synchronization between the cool like the cultures right. there was a lot of like of like shifting and changing you know so we are like really similar to both man i just was in spain and i was like so amazed to find out how many of the things we say like old sayings and stories and like stuff you, you tell your, 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 your kids you know a lot of this stuff comes from from spain you know wow okay like really but good. it yeah. makes sense because we were like a province of spain until like 1898 that's not in history that's not too long ago exactly exactly so yeah. a lot of this, I mean, having the same with a lot of the stuff that came to Africa because the, 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 the Spanish colonizers, um, they were a little bit more, I mean, slavery was brutal all over the place. We know this, but in North, in North America, it was like crazy brutal. Yeah. Same with Haiti, as mm -hmm. a matter of fact. They were like some of the worst. Um, in Cuba, as a slave... You were a little bit, I mean, you still were like, you know, uh, not, in, not, I mean, slavery at the end of the day. But, for example, I was just reading in this book, like literally two days ago, that you, there were ways that you could buy your freedom. You know, you have <laughs> like a, every Sunday you could go and do your dances. Mm -hmm. You know, they kind of like, for a long time, they were allowed to practice their religion. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, the the um the end of the of the Spanish rule it was when it got actually the worst, and at the beginning of the of the Cuban Republic, it actually got the worst with, for, for for black people. There was like a, this crazy racism going on, uh, but they were able for all of these other reasons to 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 preserve most of the music that's why the music in the, in the caribbean is so heavily influenced by african music that's why we have a strong drumming presence yeah and a strong mm -hmm. rhythmic culture in cuba and haiti in puerto rico in dominican republic you know because of of this so a lot of the music 
sometimes might be similar in different Latin American countries. Yeah. And that is something really peculiar with this song too. You know, mm -hmm. basically the fact that um, that we have almost the same song. So this is what I think. It's like basically the same song. It's just a traditional song. Uh-huh. That it's interesting. That as people were like inter like interpreting them, like playing them, performing them, they got their own kind of uh, let's call it flavor mm -hmm. or tinge in every place that this, the song went. You know, and it's mm -hmm. the same with lullabies and stuff like that that we all had share in Latin America that are mm -hmm. so similar. But people don't want to go back in history and like do research. But we have a lot. As I, as I say again, as, as many similarities we have with the, with the Black American music, mm -hmm. like, the, the, like Caribbean music, and by the, as a matter of fact, uh, Caribbean music has been a, like a huge influence in, in, the, in the foundation of, of, of jazz, and in Most many definitely. of its evol evolving points in history. Mm -hmm. People ne never talk about this in their history books. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, not enough. Okay, not yeah. enough. But you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of like the, the New Orleans piano players were so influenced by by Cuban piano playing of the 19th century. Yeah. And if you listen to like Saumel or Ignacio Cervantes like dances for piano, bro, mm -hmm. it's a lot of like rag time in there before rag time. And um and a lot of like and another revolving point in the history of jazz, Bebop. I mean, Dizzy Bird Monk, I, I was telling like how he put like half clave in his compositions, but also yeah. like Dizzy was like really deep into the, you know, Latin culture. You know? Yeah, most Amari definitely. Mario was that, got him yeah. that with like a uh, Cap Calloway. Mm -hmm. Amari was like already like a guy, a cat in the scene when Dizzy came and he took him under his wing. And mm -hmm. you hear like Bird's got a record with Machito, mm -hmm. you know? And stuff like that that people don't don't talk much about. But and if we take it further in the evolution, we always have like we'll see how like our music has been a part of the of of the of American music in general. No, yeah. Only, yeah, but fun. It's always been there. Yeah, like you said, it's, it's been there. I mean, local, like, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. we. I think like I mean, it's more of a social problem. The fact that we are not getting that. Um, recognition within the within the scene mm -hmm. i think like if we would focus on the commonalities and how as like as, as as musicians come together and like first if your music is good enough you don't have to speak much words right for me that like, you always <laughs> have to focus on that first mm -hmm. on, on, on that first like how play music that is good enough that people will recognize the values on it Mm -hmm. And then if they don't still don't understand the connections, then we can have a conversation. But that's not a one man job, you know. I think yeah, like, exactly. it shouldn't be. That's the, only, the, the reason I'm like trying to lay like, guys. Let's start a conversation about this, you mm -hmm. know. But there are a lot of great musicians out there putting a lot of great music that has this that comes from this place, you know, like Cass's music, for example. For example, Casende, the, the, the tenor player on my album. I was mm -hmm. telling you that he put an album out. And in his music, you can hear a lot of like hip hop and like, American stuff, but he also like love Brazilian and Cuban music mm -hmm. and, and Caribbean music from like West Indies and stuff like that. You know, like part of his background is Jamaican. So you can hear all of these things mm -hmm. in the music. And I think like we have to study more, more our like folklores, our like traditions. Like yeah, most of the so most the people that sound the best sometimes they understand this. Like Bert had, he understood the history of jazz before him, but he also has like so much like blues and other stuff. And when I'm talking about blues, I'm not talking about the twelve bar blues changes we play. I'm talking about something deeper than that, you know. Yeah, and that will give you content to your music. So, mm -hmm, exactly, exactly. Oh, most definitely, man. Man, why not? We we can wrap about the the ins and outs of the, like the deepness of the Latin and the, just just music in general. Um, but I want to I want to get back to the albums. So it's coming uh, on the fourth, uh, this this Friday, March fourth. Uh, you know, on Truth Revolution Recording Collective. So I'm excited for it to come out, man. Um, yeah. ap after it drops, what what are your plans? Um, are you have gigs lined up that you want to tell people about? And well, actually, yeah, we are playing uh CD release that um is on March fifteenth. 
Okay. Uh, the venue is the Django. Nice. Okay. Sure it's March 15th. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, <laughs> it is Mar March 15th. Uh -huh. um, we play in there from 7 to, to 10. We have a couple sets. Yeah. And we are going to play like the music of the album, of course. But, I, you know, after that, I mean, I recorded that like a couple years ago. I've been writing a lot. Uh, especially in the pandemic, I had a lot of time to do stuff. <laughs> yeah, so I, I wrote some music, mm -hmm. and we are playing some of that too. Uh, okay. And you know, as I, I said, like the music is always evolving. So even from the music we recorded in the album from that time to now, we, we you know we just playing different stuff and like half a whole bunch of new songs that we are going to combine. Uh -huh. And then I have other things on the. On the makings, but oh, okay. I'm the kind of guy that I I always prefer to say when it's already official. Gotcha. You know? I hear you. I, I respect it. Yeah, that's, that's a smart way to yeah, do it. Yeah, I mean that's the way you like make sure that you know. I I always had it. I I had a friend when I was a kid that he will always would be like, "Oh man, we have this gig, you know, or we're going to like somewhere," and then it didn't happen. And and I was like, "Bro, is this guy even like honest?" Yeah, yeah. About, like, do we really have stuff or is it like just like blah 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 blah? So I hate yeah. that. I always I'm the kind of guy that I would tell you whenever I you know like hey I did this or this is coming up. So for now we have that release day and also because you know how New York can be, you need like people to like focus on one thing, get their their, their um energy and their focus <laughs> exactly, like, exactly. hard enough. So if you start talking about like all the gigs you have and all of that, it's like Oh, too much information. Yeah, 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 yeah. For now, uh, we have that, but we definitely have more stuff coming up. I one of the things that that I want to do definitely is like, you know, play more gigs and, and present the music, and especially like start like traveling and mm -hmm. like you know playing the music in other other places that aren't necessarily New York. Um, we we've, we've I've done a little bit mm -hmm. in the past with my band. But now I want to like make it more of a thing that I can't tell you. Definitely, I like, want to like more, you know, that way I like, you put know, in the universe. That, that energy from that, I put it on the universe. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and you never know who, who might see this, you know. So, yeah, yeah I'm definitely interested in like doing more of um, playing not only in New York, but outside because we mostly play here, you know. Oh, they'll get out there. I mean, once they hear the album, they're gonna be, they're gonna want it. <laughs> I hope so, man. And also, like, I'm always writing music and like doing different stuff. And I'm already like, I already recorded like two projects mm -hmm. um, that I will be putting out sometime. And I'm always working on, on my music. You know, mm -hmm. for me, it's like religion. For me, it's not like working. Honestly, I it's a war. By the way, I want to say this because. A lot of people will ask you, and what do you do for a living? I'm like, I'm a musician. Yeah, but what do you do for a living? I'm like, I'm a musician. That's my job. Yeah. This is work. I got to put a lot of hours on this. Uh, I'm not only in the horn, you know, like writing music, like now doing an interview with you, um, you know, writing a bunch of emails. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of yeah. actual work. Yeah. Uh, so, but also, like, I try to not see it as work because we have this association, this negative thing that, oh man, I now have to wake up and work. Oh my gosh, I'd rather be doing something else. So I, I don't want to like look at this in that way, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, like it, it is work technically, but we're doing it because we love it. I mean, it, we're kind of privileged to have the opportunity to do that as, as our living, you know? Hell yeah. 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 And we are doing something that we like. A lot of people aren't, aren't doing that, you know, unfortunately. Yeah, man. And for the viewers out there, uh, can, where can they find you? They're on social media and uh, your website. Can you, can you let us know where to find you? Yeah, of course. Well, you know, social media, I have Instagram, like most like young people now, nowadays. <laughs> um, it's just my, no, my name, uh, Cali Rodriguez. Actually, the handle is not Cali Rodriguez Peña. Um, if you put Cali Rodriguez Peña, you will find it. Okay. But <laughs> Cali, A L I Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. We say Z at the end, uh, mm -hmm. music. That's the handle, Cali Rodriguez Music. But uh, uh, and, uh, in this Facebook, is the same as Cali Rodriguez Peña. Um, in YouTube, you can find my yeah. I have like a like a like a channel. Mm -hmm. um, my website, the same thing, Cali Rodriguez Peña dot com. Um, 
what else do I? I don't have Twitter. I've been thinking of making it like like a open ended Twitter account, but it's too much, man. <laughs> I have it, but I, I kind of go sparingly. Get, like you said, it gets to be too much. Yeah, I mean, my habit at all. I think I I opened it like a, a while ago, but I'm like <laughs> something else to like be like this instead of this. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta you have to have that balance, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. brother, thank you, man. Thank you for your time, man. Uh, we'll we'll put your you know all the info in the description of uh, for where how to contact and everything. Um, looking forward to the album dropping in Melange. Okay, it comes out this Friday, March fourth. I can't believe it's already March, but yeah, March fourth. <laughs> and uh, man, congratulations! We look forward to hearing more music from you in the future, and um, best of luck with everything, bro. Thank you so much. And remember, guys, uh, follow me if you want to follow me. Um, and if you don't, send to someone you don't like and be like, hey, follow this guy. He's great. And then they find out that I'm not that great. And they'll be like, hey, why do you do that? Well, I don't like you. You know, so you can yeah. do that. Uh, and, yeah, remember, we have this concert on March 15th at the Django, downtown Manhattan, in the Roxy Hotel. And we are playing at 7. Uh, so yeah, guys. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. go Thank check you. it out, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, yeah, we'll put on. We'll put a lot of that information again in the description. But thank you again, brother. Thank you.